Good morning, greetings in the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to this, our virtual and abbreviated worship service here at the Greater Leonard Missionary Baptist Church located in historic Old North St. Louis. I am Pastor Irving and we welcome you today. Our reading is taken from Psalm 100 of the King James in its entirety. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Bless the name and, and the word of the Lord. Bow your heads with me in a word of prayer, if you will. Father in heaven, we are here again. We love you with all that is within us because you first loved us. Father, your love is an unconditional love. You love us in spite of, not because of, and we are thankful. Father, we ask for your forgiveness for certainly we have sinned against you. We have sinned against our fellow man. Look on us, Father, and allow your face to shine upon us and give us your peace. Father, we pray your blessings upon the family of Sister Shirley James in her transitioning. We pray your blessings upon Sister Georgia Wells as she is still hospitalized. Lord God, I pray that you continue to be with her and strengthen her in her recovery. Bless Sister Nora Winston. Her father, she is better. And we know that it is all because of you. Thank you, Father. Bless those who are yet grieving. And strengthen them in their continued journey. Father, I pray that you will bless the church in every way that you deem necessary in this dark time that we are living in. For certainly, Father, the coronavirus is not the only darkness, but, Father, there's darkness across the globe. And Father, I pray that we, your people, will rise up and be that light that we need to be in this dark time. Strengthen us, Father, that we'll not allow these dark things to allow us to hide our light under a bushel. But, Father, put it on a lampstand that it might give light to all that are in the house. Lord God, bless us and strengthen us. Bless those families of their loved ones who have transitioned because of the coronavirus. Father, I pray for those who have the wrong idea about what's going on and comment in such a way that only adds fuel to the fire. Lord God, I pray for peace and peace all over the world. Bless this church and bless every church that is open in thy name. Father, have, have us to return in such a way that will bring you sure glory and that will edify your people and call someone to make a strong decision about Jesus Christ in their lives. And Father, even cause those who have strayed to return. Father, bless now and bless forever as I pray. In the wonderful and eternal name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and for his very sake, amen. To our greater Leonard family, we want you to know that Sister Shirley James has made her transition. For well, we did make you aware of the fact that the doctors had said that she would perhaps make that transition, and she has as of yesterday. Uh, arrangements for her are pending by the family. And we want you to continue to please pray for that family 
in her absence. Pray for Sister Georgia Wells, as we have said in our prayer, who is yet hospitalized. Pray that she will be stronger and well enough to leave and return to her place of residence. Pray for our entire family, Father, that they may be strengthened as she is in the hospital. We also solicit your prayers for Sister Nora Winston. She was hospitalized but now is home and is doing so much better. Continue lifting her up in your prayers as, as well. We are still preparing for how we will return and waiting for the opportune time when to return. Uh, how to return is really, really a, a, a big issue for us for when we do return, when we do assemble again, we want us to be safe. And so whatever guidelines we put before you, we're going to expect, and we know that you will, abide by them as such, where all of us will be safe. Some churches have opened and had to close again because of the rise of coronavirus cases in their congregation. So certainly we want to take our time in coming back in measured steps and come back at a time where it seems to be most safe. We pray that you will pray for our preparations and our timely return. And if you have concerns, as we said on last week, please call 314-421-5288. 314-421-5288. And we will address whatever concerns you may have. And now we have our song of inspiration. Be so inspired. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Give him glory, Jesus. 
worthy to be praised. All is worthy to be praised. No matter what you're going through, He is worthy to to be praised. All is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Savior. He is the only begotten of the Father, and he is in a field all by himself. And I think we ought to put our hands together one more time and give him the praise, for he is worthy. Yes, he is worthy. He is worthy to be, to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Again, pray with me. Father God in heaven, we, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to sit under your powerful word that will be proclaimed in this sacred and sanctified space. Father, I pray that you'll take me and use me as an instrument of your holy will, that your will be done, that you will be honored and your people will be glorified. And Father, some soul will make a decision about Christ to have him as their personal savior. And perhaps those who have strayed will return. Father, we know that you have a word for us today, a word that will be a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our paths. Father, I pray right now for your word to go forth in this dark world. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. And now, we're going to draw your attention to the book of Ephesians and the fifth chapter of that book or letter to the church at Ephesus, authored by the Apostle Paul, Ephesians 5, verses 8 through 14. And this is lifted from the King James Version. And these words are recorded. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Verse 8 we want to bring your attention to especially. For ye were sometimes or once darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Yes. The title to this message today is very simply, Keep the Light On. <laughs> Keep the Light On. It has been my experience when things get pretty dark. People have a tendency <clears throat> to throw shade on their light. In other words, they're not living as light as they ought, but they have succumbed to the darkness all around them. And I'm here to let somebody know that you need to keep the light on. The world needs your light. Well. Your family needs your light. Your neighbors need your light. Just keep the light on. The Lord Jesus, in being a witness to himself, said, I am the light of the world. And to all would-be followers, he assigns and assures this benefit. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. Yes. They shall have the reality of God in their lives. 
shining forth in a dark world. They will have the righteousness and the sense of true holy living shining in their faces, shining forth in the world. The light, the true light that Jesus is, reveals the true knowledge of the glory of God. He, in fact, was God incarnate, reconciling the world unto himself. And those that accept him as Lord and Savior became and they become recipients of light. Yes, and all light in the world. And as recipients, as children of light, we are to live lives of light. In other words, don't go back to your former life, but go ahead in your current and present life in the Lord. There's light in you that the world needs. You need to remain in the light. When you're not in the light, you are a miserable person. You need to continue to walk as he has created us. Anybody that is in Christ he or she is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What old things? All the old things of darkness. My radiant brothers and sisters, your Christian life is best lived in the light. Your Christian life is best lived in the light. You can't take this new life and just live it in an old kind of way. You need to live it as the Lord prescribes. Again, the Lord Jesus has been recorded to have said in conjunction with having told his disciples that they were the light of the world, he said, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Somebody needs your light. Don't hide your light. Don't put your light in the shade. Don't shade it with a basket in your life, but let it shine out mm -hmm. that somebody can catch your rays. Yes, so you see, the purpose of light is simply to give light. The purpose of your light is to give light. The purpose of your life is to shine forth the reality of God in this world. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, used the metaphor of light to make his point to those Ephesian Christians as to how they were to conduct their lives. They were new in Christ. They needed this new instruction as how to live as Christ in this world for Christ pleased his heavenly father and so as we are as he was in this world we will please our heavenly father we will be found acceptable to our heavenly father now they were as we are today to lead lives of light we are to lead lives of light that eighth verse tells us for Ye were sometimes or once at one time darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Amen. With this vibrant and vital verse, the Apostle Paul paints the picture of the believer's former life contrasted against the believer's new life mm -hmm. in Christ. You know how it was in your old life. When you look back over your life before you met Christ, you cringe, I'm certain, as I do every time I think about it. It used to be when I was an immature saint in the Lord that I said I had a good time if I don't have a good time anymore. But I have learned that that was not a good time at all but that it was a time of darkness. It was a time of misery. It was a time of guilt. It was a time of pain. But now in Christ Jesus, there's joy and it's unspeakable joy. Yes, Jesus illustrated, or rather Paul illustrated that truth by writing how they, how we were once darkness, but they then and we now are light because we have been born again, because we have been made these new creatures, that darkness has been dispelled by the light of Christ shining forth in our lives. And as such, 
we should lead our lives, conduct our lives as children of life. For God has saved our souls, and he hath not saved our souls for us to continue leading our lives in darkness, but leading our lives in the light. Does not matter where the church has to be, but it does matter how the church is to be. In other words, brick and mortar should not be the standard that leads our lifestyle, but a pure heart for bold ministry in Christ Jesus our Lord. I ought not to equate my being a Christian solely with this material of brick and mortar, but I need to uh, equate my lifestyle with Jesus Christ and doing his will, his work, in this world for he has left us here. He says occupy until he returns. In other words, do business. What business? His business. What business is it that? It's business of leading folk to Christ. We are called to lead lives of righteousness and true holiness instead of debauchery of life rather than the ragged lifestyle we live when we abide in darkness. Despite the location and conditions, we ought to live righteous. We ought to have this sense of moral uprightness, this sense of moral rectitude according to the word of God. We ought to live these true holy lives and not being pretentious about it, not just having a shell of it, but really having a substance of it. We are truly born again. God really abides in us by his Holy Spirit, and there's a holiness about us, and we ought to let that shine, no matter the location and no matter the conditions in which we live. Don't allow the basket of the crippling coronavirus to hide your light. Don't allow the basket of partisan and poor politics to hide your light. Well. Don't allow the basket of the relentless bullying of racism <laughs> to hide your light. Mm -hmm. Your light, our light, is kept on by the peace-producing power of love. All of us need to love somebody. Yes, sir. We ought to love everybody. Mm -hmm. God is love. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the manifestation and message of God's love. Love operates in the best interest of all. Leading the life motivated by love is how we keep the light on. There's some dark business going on in this nation right now because of some dark deeds that are being done. And we need not throw in with the darkness, but we need to have our light shining that it might show up the dark deeds of this dark time in which we live. So men and women, boys and girls, may make a decision about living in the light themselves. Yeah. Not only that, they were as we are today to lead lives that God accepts. To lead lives that God accepts. Verse 10 tells us, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. The Apostle Paul writes that we ought to live and be that proof of what is acceptable unto God. People are wondering, what does God accept? We ought to live examples as examples of what God accepts in our living. If they see us living as they are living, they have no guide. They have no alternative to the way that they're already living. We need to live our lives in the light. Lead lives that God accepts. You can't live shady, my brothers and sisters, and expect your light to shine. I think I ought to say that again. You can't live shady and expect your light to shine. Too many of us are throwing shade on our new lives. We're throwing shade on our light. We are putting our light, our lap, under a basket rather than on a lampstand living transparently in this world, knowing that once you have professed 
of faith in Christ, knowing that once you have told your neighbors, your friends, your loved ones that you are a born-again Christian, that they are watching your life. You're living in a fishbowl, and they're watching how you live, and they can see how God shows favor on you because of how you live. For the proper purpose of our light shining is for the dark world to witness your God-acceptable lifestyle. And they, as a result, will realize and recognize God and give him the praise, give him the glory, give him the honor. Not and say, look at how Ralph is, or look at how Dominique is, or look at how Antoine is, but look at God because of our living for it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I can't do it on my own. You can't do it on yours. God is still doing the work and he is faithful to continue doing it until the work is done. Well. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yes, you learn what's acceptable to God by living in accordance with his word, under the direction and guidance of his Holy Spirit, even though we read, even though we study, it doesn't always mean that we know quite how to do that. So we have the Holy Spirit in our lives. He has been sent into our lives. He is by whom we have been born again. And he is at work in our lives, leading and guiding us. And one of the manifestations or proofs of the Spirit working in us is a sense of self-control that we can live as the Word of God says. His Word spells it out. And his Holy Spirit helps us to live it out. Isn't that all right today that his Word shows us and the Holy Spirit takes us? Your consistent and constant lifestyle of righteousness and true holy living are as darts of light, piercing the deep darkness of the world. Mm -hmm. How dark this world is. How deep is this darkness? The darkness cannot overwhelm the light. For the smallest of light mm -hmm. makes the greatest and most gross darkness disappear and reveals the activity and conduct that takes place in this world of darkness. We need to know that that little bit of light, because sometimes we think, what can I do? I'm just one person, what can I do? Your little light in all of this gross darkness will be seen most clearly, because when it's darkest, your light is its brightest, and we're living in a dark time, so let your light shine. Let it shine in this dark world, my brothers and sisters. Yes. That world of ignorance, what world of ignorance? That dark world, that world of ignorance of God is immense immoralities whose inhabitants are weighed down in guilt well. and mired in the misery of sin. That's why you see so many people uh, involved in materialism. You see so many people involved in egotism simply because they are looking for something to bring them pleasure, mm -hmm. to remove the guilt, mm -hmm. to make them not miserable but joyful. And they're finding that they can't find their way out on their own. So we need to be a light to them so that they can see a way out of this human dilemma of sin. But we who live in the light, we who lead lives acceptable to God, are free of guilt, free of misery, free to know the true happiness, free to know the joy of the Lord. And that joy is our strength yes. to keep on living the life. Strength to keep the light on despite the dreaded and destructive temptation all around the camp. Haven't you found yourself tugged here and there, to and fro at times by the temptations of the world? Mm -hmm. But we have strength. We should rely upon the strength and the joy that we have in our souls because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit gives us strength yes. to continue living the life that we have been called to. That strength, all oh, this wonderful strength, this enduring strength, that strength comes from the light of the world 
that they tried to turn off on Calvary, but could not. For even the Roman centurion witnessed, surely this man was the son of God. And when they see your life and my life being that light in this world, somebody will say, surely there's a reality in serving God. Surely Jesus did get up on that third day morning. Surely it must be something to this thing that Christians are talking about. Surely I need to throw in with them. Surely, yes, he died. For the sins of the world. He was buried to prove his death. And carry our sins away. And early that foretold third day morning. He got up with all power in heaven and earth. In his hands. Power for us. To keep the light on. He is our powerhouse. And we need to stay plugged into him. It does not matter whether or not you're in brick and mortar, but it does matter whether or not you're in Christ. Yes. Stay plugged in so that you can keep your light on. Yes, Praise the name of the Lord. Be blessed in the Lord. Let us pray a prayer of thanks for God's wonderful word. Father, we thank you for your word that has brightened our dark situations mm -hmm. to allow us to know that things are not as hopeless as they seem well. because there's hope in you Amen. and your word has proclaimed it. Your word has declared it. And we who are your people who have been born again and have this light indwelling us, we are moved to allow our lights to shine despite how the world is, will not retaliate, but will show them love. When they strike us on one cheek, we'll turn to them the other. When they force us to go one mile, we'll go with them too. So Father, we're thankful for your word that we find to always be both lamp and light. In Jesus' name and for his sake we say, Amen our song of inspiration. Because the Lord is my shepherd I have everything I need He lets me rest in the middle of grass And He leads me beside the quiet stream He restores my faith in hell And He helps me to do what I That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saved. Hey, hey, hey. I'm saving his arms. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have.
we are in his arms, we are certainly safe. So keep your hand in the master's hand, and everything will be all right. Despite the riots in the land, despite the things that are being spouted from the White House, despite the coronavirus deaths, despite the mounting new cases, stay in his hands, stay in his arms, for that is our safe retreat, always safe in the Lord. And now our benedictory hymn. If you with me. of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide with all of us, henceforth now and forevermore. Let us all say one more time. Amen. Be at peace. Be at peace.